Now you may be wondering where the heck is the new base iPad? Wasn't it supposed to launch at the September event? Well, we saw nothing, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're not going to get a new base iPad this year because there is still an October event that should take place and we could see the base iPad then. Now reports regarding the iPad 11 have been a little odd because we have heard a lot about the same old A14 chipset staying in this iPad, which would be disappointing news. But now there is some hope that things might not be too bad. Let's delve in. So we first heard about the iPad 11 retaining the A14 when Mac rumors sifted through technical information posted by a private account on Twitter who has been credible in the past. And what was weird is that the model number the source gave us did not align with the model number the next iPad is supposed to have. That's why back then I suggested this might actually not be the iPad 11 and maybe it's a new HomePod with a display instead or a modified iPad 10. And guess what guys, I was onto something because we now have information from another Twitter source called Nicholas Alvarez and they claim there was a new A14 iPad in the works but that's been scrapped and the A16 is coming to the iPad 11. That's superb news guys, I am very excited. And to back this up, the source did share the identifiers iPad 15,7 and iPad 15,8 for the Wi-Fi and seller versions of the iPad 11. And so we can confirm both are getting the A16. Now this is actually better than I was expecting because I was under the assumption Apple would give us the A15 because we usually get a one newer generation chipset with each iPad model and the A15 is still in circulation with it being used in the iPhone 14, 13, the SE, the iPad mini and the Apple TV. So logistically, it would be simpler and cheaper for Apple's supply chain to allocate this widely produced chipset to the iPad as well. Or at least I thought that would be the case. But I guess since Apple is going to be replacing most of these A15 products very soon and the iPhone 15 is going to stay in the range with the A16, it could make sense to use a new chipset and at the end of the day, I'm not complaining. And technically Apple did skip a year, it's been two years since the iPad 10 released. And so yeah, going from the A14 to the A16 could make sense. Now, of course, with the A16, another big upgrade will be a boost in RAM. The A16 never came with four gigs of RAM. So yeah, going from A14 to A16 does actually make a lot of sense. Now, of course, another big upgrade with the A16 is a boost in RAM. The A16 never came with four gigs of RAM, so we can for sure expect the iPad 11 to finally get six gigs. And that should make multitasking on this smoother, which of course is always great news. Unfortunately, it will also mean this does miss out on Apple intelligence but I'm not so angry about that considering this is the base iPads. It's supposed to be affordable and so undoubtedly there's gonna be compromises, but I don't think the average Joe buying this iPad is gonna be up in arms. They can't use creepy AI emojis on their new budget iPads. Though of course there is a chance that maybe the A16 with a combination of eight gigs of RAM could help scrape it into the requirements needed for Apple intelligence. Since right now it does seem the main reason the 15 and the 14 Pro don't support these AI features is the lack of RAM, but the chipset should be able to handle it, especially when the M1 can run Apple intelligence. Now you may be asking, is that the only thing that sets us apart from the iPad 10? Well, mostly yes, but there are a few other smaller changes we've heard about. For example, we should see some connectivity improvements. I definitely see them making a massive fuss about Wi-Fi 6E, even though most don't have Wi-Fi 6E routers to actually take advantage of the better speeds, but expect that alongside Bluetooth 5.3 support. The next thing I'm sort of curious about is Apple Pencil Pro support. Because of the landscape camera, the charging strip needed for the Apple Pencil 2 was missing, and so as a result, they gave us Apple Pencil 1 support with a horrific dongle, and then eventually launched a much better USB-C pencil. Thankfully though, with the new iPad M Pro, Apple has restructured the strip so that of course, you can have wireless charging whilst also getting the landscape camera. And so there is a possibility the iPad 11 could now get Pencil Pro support. Yes, it's kind of overkill having this pencil that has bloody gyroscope support and all kinds of fancy tech on a display that's likely not gonna be laminated and also like P3 support, but I think just for some continuity in the range, it would be nice if all iPads supported the same pencils. Remember, you won't be forced to buy the Apple Pencil Pro. You can just of course settle for the USB-C pencil if you don't need some of the fancier features. But considering the USB-C pencil lacks features like pressure sensitivity that even the first gen pencil supports, it would be nice to offer something more feature packed for those who want it. You could argue it doesn't make sense for a non-pro iPad to support a pro pencil, but the Air already supports it, and I'm sure the Mini is also going to get Apple Pencil Pro support, 
And so yeah, bring it to the iPad 11 as well. It's time to scrap the second gen and first gen pencils, stop selling them all together, and make the USB-C and Pro version the only pencils the new iPad supports. We should not have a bloody compare page for iPad pencils. Finally, I can also see them updating the colors. At the end of the day, I think that's what most consumers actually care about anyways. Here's hoping we see a new orange or green iPad this time around to get all the Apple sheep way too excited about a design that originated from 2018. And that includes me, by the way. Now, I don't think the price will be changing. It should stay at 349 and don't expect a storage upgrades. I don't think they're going to be that generous. And 64 gigs is manageable for the price. I do, however, expect the Magic Keyboard Folio to get price cuts, considering it makes no sense. It's only $100 cheaper than the actual iPads. And so maybe that's revised to 149 or 199, and hopefully we get a black version as well. Now, release wise, as I said, there is a strong chance we could see this at the October event. And we have had many reports in the past suggesting the iPad 11 won't release till the second half of this year. And we are very much in that period right now. So yes, an October release alongside M4 Max and the new iPad mini could make sense. You may be wondering though, how do these sources actually know this? Are they just making random predictions in the hopes of being right? Well, no, the source in question has been pretty spot on with their rumors in the past because they have legit sources in the supply chain. Apparently, Apple is working with China's BYD, who assembles iPads, to move new product introduction resources to Vietnam. Now, if you're wondering what new product introduction resources mean, well, I actually don't know. But thankfully for me, I can use the powers of Google and read this off a teleprompter. And so MPI refers to Apple working with suppliers on the design and development of new products to ensure they can be made properly in a new manufacturing plant. Wow, you learn something new every day. This will be the first time they do this process outside of China apparently, especially for a core product, but it makes sense considering the fact Apple's not changing a lot with the iPad 11. They're basically recycling the iPad 10's chassis for the most part, but now with some new fancy colors. I will also mention that German has said there is a low-end Magic Keyboard in the works, and what I'm thinking is that maybe the Magic Keyboard the iPad Air has is replaced and in its place is a cheaper Magic Keyboard that both the base iPad and iPad Air supports. It would help simplify the range and so I can see that happening. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching. Right, so for those waiting for the new M4 MacBook Pro and also M4 Max in general, I come bearing great news, people. So let's dive right in because there is now evidence Apple's gearing these Macs up for release. According to display guru Ross Young, display panels destined for the 14-inch and 16-inch M4 MacBook Pro models are shipping to Apple this month, which of course does heavily suggest they could be launching in the final quarter of the year, like Gurman recently told us, so expect another Mac-focused October event. Now, if you're wondering why Apple's assembly...